As you suggest that I represented the religious congregations, Catholic orders of Canada. But Palestine was not new to me. I studied scripture in Palestine and I accompanied pilgrimages to the Holy Land over the years. And I'm also very much in touch with the Palestinian community here in Toronto because when I'm in my office every morning I have coffee with Palestinians. So as a result of that, I'm aware of the issues confronting Palestine because the people with whom I have con uh, coffee, they're in touch via Skype normally with their family members actually living in Palestine, Bethlehem, and in Jordan and Lebanon. And uh, so I'm aware, therefore, of the issues that we've spoken about, the occupation, the settlements, the torture, the jailings, and the annexations. And of course, while we lived in Palestine, uh, we found ourselves in a walled ghetto called Bethlehem. After a couple of days of our visit, I found myself in a very interesting place. I found myself sliding into a bit of a spiritual retreat for the time that I was in Palestine this time. I was incredibly interested in the folks that I met, the folks who traveled with us around and who associated with us in the varied communities that we met. I was interested in them and how they were personally living this human tragedy. The bigger political and demographic issues slid a bit to the back. And so I began to call what I was personally experiencing and that which I wanted to bring back to Canada. I was calling it a terrible beauty. Why did this retreat interest come upon me. A few years ago, when I returned from a similar exposure visit to Brazil, a friend of mine commented, Paul, why is it when you return from the global South, Africa, Latin America, Middle East, you're always excited, full of hope, you're very positive, and yet when you leave our middle-class Canadian conversations, you're kind of flat. I thought about his comment for weeks. And then I came to realize, and man, did it ever hit me in Palestine, that the folks in the global South and the Middle East seem to me to be living out of their essence, while most of us in the North of the Americas were living out of our extra. And of course, there's never enough extra when you live there. So for most of us, our experience in Palestine, I listened, observed deeply and went out of my way to seek personal, intimate conversations with folks that we encountered. For example, I spent a bit of an afternoon with a medical doctor from Biet Saur, the manager of the hotel where we stayed, a couple of hours of conversation with him the employees of that hotel where we stayed, people I met when the mayor of Bethlehem gave us a, a, a supper and there were varied folks from varied religious commitments there. And then of course, when I was with Kairos, Palestine, I met with the patriarch. A few years ago on a similar visit to Latin America, a young person said to me, who was following me around for three days, Paul, having seen what you've seen and experienced what you have experienced, when you go back home to Toronto and do nothing, you're not only not a Christian, you're not even a human being. That comment haunted me the time I was in Palestine with the delegation. And that was the reflection I took away as I journeyed in flight back to Toronto. So for me personally, because I've seen so many similar kinds of delegations going to very places throughout our world, and it's nice to talk about it. It's very beautiful to say, hey, we're in the conversation, but it has to happen back here. And so for me, the question is, I'm a Canadian. What am I doing? if I say I am truly committed 
to the struggles in Palestine. 